Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome, it's the Ramble, and we go from now until uh, um, midnight Eastern time here in the United States of America, and of course, as we do always, we like to kind of, if we can, go over and talk to a guest of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, he's always ready, he's always here, he's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hi. Always on time. Always on time, right, Larry? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. A yeah. little rarity out here. Uh, we almost had snow last night in San Francisco. So. Really? Yeah, it was supposed to snow on, I think, Mount Tam, but above 1,200 feet. So I, I've seen snow here once before. So. I, remember, I remember once it was snowing at the beach, mm -hmm. uh, which is very rare. Yeah. And Mount Tam occasionally will get a dusting. Yeah. You know, but Mount, that's Mount Tamil Pius, folks. We have a, we call it Mount Tam. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, it uh, in fact, do you know, have you, do you know the, uh, the uh, legend about uh, Mount Tamil Pius? No. Oh, <clears throat> here, here it is. Here it goes. You ready? Uh, if you go and look at it, say, from, oh, I don't know, Highway 101, all right? Mm -hmm. It looks like a resting maiden with her hair down one side and, you know. Uh -huh. Look at it next time you look at it. And okay, that, I've never I, heard this. And I think that's something about what Tamil Pius means is like resting maiden or something like that, you know. Okay. So, um, yeah. So anyway, they, well, they, I guess that kind of excited you, didn't it? You you grew up in the shadows of the resting maiden. <laughs> I used to climb all over there and all in the back. Uh, you know, there was, there are other mountains there. There's one called Mount Baldy. Which Mount Baldy? Is, I thought that was Southern California. Right, right so. behind. Yeah, there is one in Southern California too. But there's a Mount Baldy in um, Marin County, right behind uh, San Anselmo and Ross. I did not know that. And but, I, uh, I've climbed many a time to the top of Mount Baldy. <laughs> when but I there's would, never been a Mount Rogaine. It, it, right. <laughs> there, there was a time when you could actually. There was no. There, there are a lot of homes down there now. But there was a time when you could go up there and it was nothing but pasture and everything. You would climb to the top of Mount Baldy. Now you have to go up the other side because there are just too many homes you would have to go over their fences to get to Mount Baldy. Well, you grew up there. That is, uh, you got to be rich to live in that area now. Um, rich? Not as rich as I think you need to be to live in San Francisco. Yeah, either, either one's pretty expensive. Yeah, San Francisco's insane, but... Uh... Nothing wealthier than, uh, let's say, across from Mill Valley is Tiburon. That is uh, super rich. Yeah, yeah. There's like $30 million homes there. So. Well, you know what Tiburon's named after? Uh, Tiburon means shark. That's correct. <laughs> correct. Yeah, see, we, these are things, by the way, we're giving you a tour of our back, <laughs> our home, uh, and uh, these are facts you may have never, ever been aware of okay Robert Redford's father lived in Tiburon I once read did he really oh, mm -hmm. son of a bitch uh, and um, uh, so um, okay um, Robert Redford's father uh, let me see here what Tom else Tom Snyder we... who interviewed you Tom Snyder lived in Tiburon uh, I think uh, towards yeah right towards the end he moved up here oh really oh okay yeah. all right and then uh, let's see here. Who, who else uh, are we talking about? Uh, Probably uh, <laughs> that could. I think there's oh, a famous. Oh, I know. Player. I know who I interviewed in Tiburon years ago. It was my first interview. The first interview I ever did. Um, any idea who my first interview ever was? You'll never guess. 
in early radio. In early radio, but he wasn't a radio guy. This was an interview with a, a famous uh, actor who lived in Tiburon. Uh, let's see. There could have been uh, not uh, name one movie he was in. Doctor Strange Love. Sterling Hayden. Ah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, I re- he did live up here. Yeah. 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 And how that was your first interview? That was my first interview I ever did with anybody. Was he terrifying or a cool guy? Terrifying. <laughs> wow, because he looked that way on screen. He he had a what it was here here people don't maybe don't know the story about Sterling Hayden. In fact, maybe most of the people listening to us right now don't know who Sterling Hayden is. Let me once again. Everybody's seen The Godfather, right? Who hasn't mm-hmm. seen The Godfather? He played the bad cop that Pacino kills. The, the Pacino kills, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, Sterling Hayden was he was kind of a mediocre actor. He was never what we would call one of your go-to actors when you needed heavy lifting, okay? Uh, And he um, um, did this uh, this whole thing with his kid, and I'm trying to remember the exact story, but he and his wife were having a a fight, or ex-wife, over the uh, kid and the the who would be getting the kid and how they would be getting the kid and how often they would be getting the kid and all of that. So he just up and took the kid on a boat called the Wanderer and sailed to Tahiti with the kid. Wow. And then he came back, and of course, you know, the, the cops were all over him, and the uh, the uh, judge was yelling and screaming about how can you do this, you know, and so on. Uh, and uh, that was the big Sterling Hayden story. Uh, and so when I interviewed him was after he had come back from that, gone through the whole court process, didn't get thrown in jail. And uh, he had written a book called The Wanderer about the trip with the boat. And um, he, um, uh, I interviewed him. And uh, I don't remember much of the interview except that exactly what you said, I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified, first of all, because I had never interviewed anybody before. You know, and when you first interview somebody, it, it it's like it's like breaking your cherry. For me, it was. You know, uh, I was a uh, actually in many ways a terrible interviewer at the time, and uh, I got to be I think one of the better interviewers in the country at at a certain oh, yeah. point later on. But it took me years, and it took me years because I also had one guy I can't remember who it was who said you you you're a terrible interviewer. And that made really hurt my feelings, so I worked at it. And finally, I found the keys to doing interviews. But it, it took a while, and uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was not a, a uh, easy thing. Um, but I, uh, it, back in those days, when you start interviewing, when you're uh, interviewing, you, you, you do one major mistake. While he's answering the question, you're thinking about what the next question's going to be. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, you're not listening to his answer. And that's the big mistake most interviewers make. They're always thinking about, okay, he's answering the question. What's my next question going to be? God, i got to have a question yeah, for him. Uh, yeah. yeah. And what I learned over the years was is that an interview is a conversation. And you don't. The conversation, when, yeah. when you're in a conversation, you, you're not sitting there going, oh, hey, Alex, uh, um, hey, what do you think of so and so? Okay. And then while I'm answering you, you're thinking, what's the next thing you're going to say? No. You just listen to me and you, and then you reply to that. And that's, that's the essence of interviewing is, is you don't spend your whole time worrying about what that person's going to say uh, next. Yeah, and if you can do that, that's when you get people yeah. to reveal interesting things. Yeah, and so I never, I, uh, I uh, people say, well, I, your interview skills are very good, and I say, no, my conversation skills are very good. I mean, I hold a conversation with people. I don't interview them, and I think that's a uh, a pretty good uh, pretty good way of describing it, you know. Um, so so uh, I. Uh, um, you know, so when I was doing him, 
it was one of those things. You get halfway through the interview and you don't know where you are because you haven't listened to what he just said. And sometimes you're missing something which may be important and take you on a tangent you never expected to go. Again, a lot of other people, when they're interviewing people, think about where they want to go with the interview rather than letting the interview take them where they're going to go. I mean, every now and then I'm, I, I do a thing like I do with you where I, I uh, talk to my uh, ex-wife, Ronnie. And uh, every time we t start, before we start uh, doing it, she says, well, uh, what do you want to talk about? And I, I go, I don't know, let's just start talking. And that's really what you want to do in an interview. You don't want to know where you're going. You're going on a trip. You're going on yeah. an adventure here. But you don't know what the adventure is going to entail. And, and you really have to pay attention to the terrain. <laughs> you know, it, uh, that's my bet. Well, I just gave away how to interview. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Well, but it's still not that easy to put into practice. It's, it's not that easy to put into practice. No. It is... It is uh, uh, you know, it took years for me to suddenly, I think, you know, where I, I'll tell you where I learned how to interview. This is very strange if I think about it. I mean, I, I was doing okay. I could hold my own, but I was doing interviews like anybody else would do. And, and, and all of a sudden I was at ABC and either as a penalty or as just a part of the job, they said, we want you to every week record a half hour morning, Sunday morning show for our public affairs department. Because in those days, radio stations had to have a certain amount of public affairs on the air. So I, uh, uh, I said, okay, well, uh, I guess I'll do it. And they said, and we'll, just, we'll just send you the guests and you can interview them. And so they would then send me guests into the studio for this half-hour show <laughs> in, in which there was no way to interview them. I mean, it was like, and now here's so-and-so, who is the uh, head of the Boy Scouts of America. And you go, how the fuck am I going to... But somehow, <laughs> somehow I learned that not... By, but to start listening to their answers and holding a conversation, and I could keep that going for a half hour. But if I just had to ask them a series of questions, it would be five minutes. Yeah. Because there was nothing to ask. So, you know, what's good about the Boy Scouts? Thank you. Uh, what's bad about the Boy Scouts? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, we have another 28 minutes to go. But if I sit there and I go, you know, and I just start a conversation, I found I could get the half hour to fly by. And so in that stupid little show, I learned how to interview people because they were throwing me just the most mediocre subjects for interviews you could possibly imagine. And that's how I learned how to interview. After that, I became a good interviewer. Okay. And, uh, and now I don't and interview anybody because I'm out of work. So. <laughs> You got this skill that you can't use. Well, you know, it really pisses me off that I do have skills and I can't really use them. And people go, but but you've got a podcast. Yes, and so do 30,000 other people, you know. And competing against that is, I knew how to compete when there were five other radio stations in town, you know, or 10 other yeah. radio stations in town. But when I got 30,000 other radio stations in town, there's no way to compete because everybody's trying to grab ears and so on. And it's all gone corporate, believe it or not. Where in the beginning, podcasts were just these people doing these shows, you know. It's now, it's now all corporate. So, you know, I was watching uh, CBS Sunday Morning uh, on yesterday, on Sunday, rather, the day before yesterday. And... Uh, uh, they have this uh, guy called uh, Mo Rocca, and uh, he does a podcast now called Mobituaries, which is good, good title, you know, and it looks like it's interesting. But they plugged it at least twice on CBS Sunday Morning. How am I going to compete against that? Yeah. You know, how am I going to get somebody else's ears over that? You know, I mean... Um, I do a pretty good show, but you know, how do I get the word out there? You know, so it, it's, it's very difficult. It's, you know, so I, 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 that basically 
compared to who used to listen to me, nobody listening to me. So people go, well, you, you got to, you got to, you know, I got maybe 500 to 1,000 a day through the various sources that we, that we do. But I used to have 30,000 people listening to me every morning. I know. You know? And I, who knows how many, how many people when I was on Sirius Satellite Radio. Could have been two and it could have been a million. I don't know, you know. But uh, here, it's like, you know, it, it, come on, please, will you listen to my little podcast? And so, um, well, it's still a good one, God damn it. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's the best podcast ever. <laughs> and how did... Uh, and so how did the Sterling Hayden interview end? Do you remember? Goodbye, kid. Something like yeah. that. He was, you know. Uh, it, it, there wasn't horrible, but it wasn't really friendly. Right, right. Which is the way he looked. But. It, it wasn't. He was, he was, he was, uh, he was quite a, uh, um, how can we call it? He tried to be a man's man. You yeah. Know? He tried to be the adventurer, good. you know. He, he uh, and, uh. He, uh, you know, he had a very inflated self, uh, sense of himself. Um, but I got the interview, and for me, that was a big deal. I got Sterling Hayden because he was in the news every day, and there was in the newspapers and so on, and I, I managed to get him. He had a little office in a lumber office, old lumber office in Tiburon. And um, uh, that's, where I, that's where I interviewed him. But that was my first interview. You'll never forget your first interview. <laughs> Well, was this on, uh, you, what, you went over and taped it? Hmm? You taped it over there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, did I, did I, yeah, I taped it. I had to tape it. You know, I think I had a little cheap, I had, like, in those days, I think all we had were reel to reel. Reel reel, had to be, yeah. And I interviewed him, and I, bro I broadcast it I, over KTIM <laughs> in San Rafael, and uh, that was my first, my first interview. And uh, he said, not a great actor, but maybe one of the greatest comic performances in Strange Love. <laughs> yes, you know, I mean, uh, he was cast to type. Yeah, that, you know, <laughs> such a funny movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and do you know the? Uh, do you know the uh, little historical? fact about the uh, debut of, of the opening date of uh, Dr. Strangelove. Of the opening date of Dr. Strangelove? Why it had to be changed. Uh, oh, hold on a second. When, well, let's see here. The film came out in the 50s, didn't it? 64. Oh, 64. Well, then it would have to, but it was it Kennedy? It, can, it was supposed to open the Kennedy assassination weekend, so they pulled it and waited until January. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, uh, uh, was, uh, I thought, wait a minute, I thought, uh, didn't Kennedy die in 63? Yep. <clears throat> and the movie came out, oh, in 64 is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, um, so they were supposed to bring it out like November, uh, September, uh, November 11th or something. Uh, November 22nd. <laughs> November 22nd. It was a Friday, yeah. It, it, Wait a minute. Now, when did Kennedy die? What day was it? Was it November 11th? He died the Friday, so maybe they maybe it had to been the week before then. What was it? November 11th. Or the week after. Yeah, November 11th. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, that is Kennedy's death, isn't it? November. November 11th. 22nd. Yeah. November 22nd. Why did I say 11th? Because I'm getting old and I can't remember shit. Because it's 11:22, so you're thinking of the month. Yeah. Oh, and so it was supposed to come out the 23rd. And yeah. Da -da -ba -da -ba. Okay. Well, it's although he must have been an okay actor because Kubrick actually used him in uh, one of his first movies. He used uh, him in the uh, killing. Is it that the one where they rob a racetrack? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or I think they movie. want to. They're going to kill a racehorse, aren't they? Something like that. I, think I just remember. Yeah. I just remember the try. I think they're trying to take the receipts at a racetrack. That's what I thought it was about. But. Well, they found that Hayden could act if you if you gave Hayden a certain kind of part, he could do it. The, the reason he was so terrible is when he was in all those pictures. And I can't remember who he was under contract. It was either Paramount or Universal. I can't remember. Maybe neither. Maybe it was twentieth. I can't remember. Anyway, he uh, uh, he had to play romantic parts and you know do these 
certain films which he just wasn't suited to. Yeah, that would be you know, bad. If 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 it caused some caused some kind of heavy lifting and acting, this guy was not capable. You know, so uh, um, it, it, you know he, he but he but he is. I think if people if I'm going to say who he is, I might say Doctor Strange Love. But if I say Godfather and I say the bad cop and Godfather, they go oh, that guy. Yeah, the guy who's k- killed by by uh, the son. Uh, by Al Pacino in that picture. Um, and, but he was good, though, in that, because I love the way when he got shot, he he reacted to it. He was, like, eating at the same time. Yeah. And and, and it was, like, what, did he shoot him in the head? He shoot him I thought the neck. The neck, yeah. And it just goes and grabs, it's just, he does a great, I always think that certain actors, I judge them by how good they can die in a film. <laughs> and in his case, man, he was he was the best. He was just the best. Um, uh, that was a great dying scene. Um, you ever remember any other great dying scenes? Nah, nah. I'm trying to think. Yeah. By the way, speaking of dying, I'm watching a show on Netflix. You don't get Netflix, do you? I watch it when I go to my sister's. <laughs> It's only a, it's only two hours. It's only two hours away. <laughs> yeah, but but how you can't binge watch something because then you'd have to stay there for several days, right? Yeah, I did binge watch a couple of things I liked on it. So you know, uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, the binge watching uh, uh, this show called Russian Doll uh, with Natasha Leone. Do you remember who she was? As an actress, I've heard that name. She's, she's on Orange is the New Black, but she did one of my favorite movies, which was Down and Out in Beverly Hills. Oh, that's an old one. With, yeah. I think, Alan Arkin. And it's about a Jewish family who's homeless, who has to go from place to place to place to place, and she played the daughter in that. Well, anyway, because she had Orange is the New Black, they gave her a series on Netflix, and it's called Russian Doll. And it's kind of like Groundhog Day, but it isn't. In other words, she she it starts out with her in a bathroom, and she goes out and she leaves the bathroom, and it's a party, and it's a birthday party for her, and then she leaves, and she gets hit by a car and killed, and the minute she's killed, she winds up in the bathroom again, and then she goes out, and then she gets she falls down a flight of stairs, and she gets she dies and winds up in the bathroom again and comes up. <laughs> And, you know, she's trying to figure out why this is happening to her. You know, that the it's not that the same, it's the, she can't get out of the same day or same evening and morning. She can't get out of that. That's enough of a problem. But she can't figure out why she's dying all the time and then coming back to this party in this, in the, in this bathroom. And it's really, I found, they're only 25 minutes each. And there are eight of them. And I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. That does sound interesting. I will check that out. Yeah. And it's only 25 minutes an episode, so you can just tell your uh, your sister, uh, hey, have you got, uh, I've got, I, I need about four hours here. Uh, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I need four hours. Please leave me alone while I watch Russian Doll. <laughs> and what I like about the title is the Russian Doll refers to those nesting dolls. You know, the Russian yeah, nesting yeah. dolls. That, you know, there's one inside of another one, inside of another one, inside of another one. So she keeps living this one life after another, after another, after another. And then I, well, I'm not spoiling it because it becomes an integral part of the show. She finds somebody that has the same problem. Okay. And so they try to solve it together. And it, it's it's really, I thought, I thought it was very good. That sounds I, like good writing. It, it's a good idea. And she came yeah. up with the concept and, you know. I think the show, the show is produced by Dave Becky and he used to do okay. all, he used to do all the stuff for Louis CK Louis, yeah. I have a funny feeling this show was developed by Louis CK and Amy Poehler is involved in it uh, because it just it's out of the same company and everything and it's like okay well wh- what are we gonna do we're gonna do a show without Louis CK <laughs> involved so <laughs> well it's quite a thing 
Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we're, um, uh, we're, we're, well, we're almost getting to the point where it's time to say goodbye once again. The uh, saddest any, time. Any words of wisdom that you care to implore, Im, Im, impose on the people out there? <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, if you feel like quitting, I would go ahead and follow your dream. Quitting what? Yeah, life. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my parting words are with. Yeah, I'm beginning to think the same thing is true. And you know, yeah, sure. uh, suicide is in a, 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 a um, what was the term? A acceptable form of uh, self defense. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> I like that. Thanks, Larry Bubbles <laughs> Brown, you, Larry. ladies and gentlemen. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap. The Great American Broadcast Network. And that's uh, that's Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Bubbles Brown, yes, sir. Uh, got on a little, we didn't do our uh, uh, swift uh, changeover of programs here uh, because I had a problem. Oh, what was that problem, Alex? Well, I'll t- I'm, when they, people call up, I'll tell what uh, happened all weekend long and how I solved it. And, what the problems were and you know what we were what we were all into here but let me turn on the um let me turn on the skype here so that we can talk to some people and um and and you you can call us if you want to find out how to call us oh boy i am just tired i've been tired lately i'm just tired all the time and i don't understand it oh boy um so anyway, uh, but I'm drinking coffee. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You wake up, okay? Wake up, America. Anyway, uh, our phone lines are open, and you can give us a call. And I'll tell you all about my adventures this weekend of trying to get the studio in in shape. We did a big changeover this weekend, and um, it it, pre- it always presents problems for the first couple of days. It's uh, kind of like. Uh, uh, getting the new s- car smell out of the car so that it now just is second nature to run it. So I'm exhausted uh, phys- physically in every other way from having uh, having worked on this this weekend and getting uh, a new computer going in this studio. And there are all kinds of problems with it, but I'll uh, I'll explain that when Phil calls. He'll he'll call and I'll be able to uh, just. Beat my chest at him, okay? But the lines are open, and we're waiting for your calls, and uh, we don't know who's going to be the first one to call. And uh, it's, it's Phil Meyer. Of course, it's always Phil. You know, we can always, we can always, I hate to say this, but we can always count on Phil. <laughs> Hello, uh, Phil. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? All right. Uh, just uh, giving you uh, due warning, it'll be a Phil-free Wednesday and Friday. Well, feel free Wednesday and Friday. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll take Wednesday and Friday off. How's that? <laughs> well, that's up to you. Uh, while you were uh, playing the uh, Bubbles interview, did you get an opportunity to watch the speech? No. Uh, you missed a, a good speech. Oh, really? Uh, I think it was a very bipartisan evening. And uh, even Nancy Pelosi kind of smiled. Well, I mean, she wasn't going to be rude. Not, well, she wasn't, uh, you know, she was smiling. Well, here comes uh, uh, Rob Alfano. I mean, I watched a little bit of the speech, so I know that you're lying. Uh, but uh, hello, Rob. Hey there. Hey, Alex. Hey, hey Phil. Yeah. Hey. How's it going? Mm-hmm. Did you watch the uh, Trump uh, speech? No, no. It would not. Oh, okay. All right, fine. Well, then he has. I'll, I'll read the crib notes, and I'm sure that uh, there's plenty of crap in there. I don't need to listen to him blow. Well, I, I I listened to about a half hour of it, and I heard uh, a lot of he he was going for applause break. So it was how about the American Eagle? Mm, How's how yeah. do y'all? We got to save the American Eagle. Uh, yeah. By the way, we got it. We got it. We got to save. We got to be good to every mother in America. How about that? Yes, applause. Well, you applause. know those World War II veterans and the uh, Holocaust survivors. They didn't know. And, and so they forth. didn't know where the fuck they were. Oh uh, no, no! It's very, very proud of them. Uh, yeah, and, one uh, of them got up and 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 uh, and and took a bow, and the other it was one his birthday. and the other one couldn't get up, so somebody had to help him up, and he was he didn't know where he was, and it was it was pathetic using those poor guys, <laughs> uh, you know, 
Hey, Charles. How are you, Charlie? Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what did, did you see it at all? Me? No, I didn't watch it. See, that's how much anybody cares around here about the, about your, your hero. Yeah, well, I was proud of him. And uh, you were proud I thought him. it was a very good effort to uh, uh, what he did. And these applause breaks or whatever you want to call it, uh, I think were uh, a good bit unifying. You know, it was, it was, uh, it was nice that I, I, it I, I didn't find it unifying more at all. separation. I, I didn't hmm? find it unifying at all. I found him every... Huh? Every time he speaks, he sounds like a cheap lounge singer. Yeah. When he asks, well, when he to asks begin for with, those he reads a tele, he reads a teleprompter so badly well, that it's you know, you know it's, it's it's not uh, how you deliver the message; it's the message. Oh, oh, really? It isn't how you deliver the message if you don't no. deliver the message well. Maybe well, for you, then, because you're well, a broadcaster. No, no, as as a as a salesman, you should know that the pitch is the most important single thing in the way in which you approach that pitch. No, a satisfied customer. A satisfied the after thing. after the fact, but you got to make them a customer first. Yeah, but you don't do that by pitching. You do that by listening. Oh, so you don't offer them anything when you're trying to sell them something? You ask questions that brings them to oh, the conclusion. Oh, come on, Phil, you're pitching them, okay? No, I, I, no, I happen to be very good at what I do, and my goal is a satisfied customer. And the way to do that Apparently is to ask them not questions that to make them realize what their needs are. Hey, here's Doug. Doug has joined us. Hey, Doug. It's my, it's, and it's my pleasure. How y'all doing tonight? Uh, Doug, hey. Doing fine. Thank you. I got to do a little correcting good. here. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> uh, continue with. Uh, uh, did, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, uh, Dr. Dupree. Dr. Dupree? Well, I mean, no, I, I'm, I just, you know, called in and pretty much, you know, like about everybody else uh, except for Phil. You know, I didn't watch the thing because it's like uh, you can't believe anything out of this guy's mouth. And you just know he's just, as you said, trying to get the claws on. I'm just curious. Uh, did they bring up that kid who, like, you know, that snowflake that got picked on because his last name was Trump? I remember they talked about it during the day there did they ever bring him up or anything whoever phil you're the one who watched it uh i didn't see that part i must have gotten up for it hmm. did, did you watch it okay, uh, did I, you watch the speech doug oh no no not at all see, I, I don't believe anything this guy says i have no respect so far so far time. he has about a 25 percent rating on this yeah. <laughs> on this no excuse me 20 percent rating because i only watched the first i don't know 15 20 minutes of it and then I just said, ah, you know, he's going for every applause break he can get. It's, it's like the Ed Sullivan show where he's introducing people in the audience and he's getting a pity party based on their appearance there. Uh, you know what? You know what he didn't do, which I thought was in, not gracious at all. He acted like that pardon was all his doing when it wasn't, when it was it was Kim Kardashian and she should have gotten credit along. If he wanted to take credit, fine. But he should have said, and Kim Kardashian brought this problem to me, and I listened to her, and I gave the woman a pardon. That he you shouldn't think have, she, hmm? Do you think Kim Kardashian needs more press? No, that's not what I'm saying. I think that when you do something good, you need to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, noticed for it. And, and he, well, he, was, when he takes credit. Huh? It was Trump that pardoned her. It was Trump you that know. pardoned her, but she was the one that pursued the White House to get the pardon. She, he would have never known she existed if it hadn't been for Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the bottom well, line is... Credit, I mean, he takes credit for everything. I mean, he took uh, credit for sort of like, oh, look at what I did, you know, even though I inherited a good economy and, you know, lower uh, unemployment through Obama. Yeah. But I'm going to take all the credit for it. And, I'm gonna and say he I deserves a it. horrible economy. No, he got no, he, he got a better he got a better economy and a, and better employment numbers by osmosis. It was a trend that had already started under Obama. But he will never credit Obama with anything. Obama said no, never that, apologize uh, for anything either. Uh, one and uh, one in one and a half percent was the new norm for GDP growth. And uh, Trump said that he was going to produce uh, three and four percent. And and he did. And, yeah, uh, it's a false economy, though. It's going to come crashing yeah. around him. 
It's like everything else, slow and steady. He, what he did, he, what he did was he got rid of all those onerous uh, regulations, or many of yes. the onerous regulations. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so he's destroying oh, yeah. the country. So he's destroying the the world. Good. Let's kill more animals so we can get the ivory over here. Let's just dump more stuff so sea life can eat more plastic bottles. But hey, we don't care. Yeah. Uh, well. You know, you can go to the extremes on anything that you want to. You know, if uh, what it's That's doing what is doing. it's helping our economy. He's pumping oil. Uh, we're no longer dependent on Mideast oil. Uh, we're the largest producer. We shouldn't of be oil. dependent on oil at all. We should be into alternative forms of energy, which we are not pursuing, which the Chinese if, are. Phil, yeah. if if you look at the way he's running his his idea of pro being progressive in terms of uh, science and stuff, we'd be stuck with gaslights down the streets. There'd be no, there'd be no innovation. There's no such thing as innovation. He's trying to hold on to coal, and he, you know, yeah. we led the world. Yeah. We led uh, the world. I, I, Rob, I need to turn up my wick uh, to get the flame a little bit. Uh, yeah, get uh, the hamsters running on the wheel because it looks like your lights are dimming over there. Yeah. Well, anyway, I was uh, I was very uh, proud and very happy with the speech, uh, the uh, the amount of the speech that I saw. Proud? What? Like a dog that you pet on the head because he took a poop in the right place? <laughs> that's yes. about it. And that's very. I was important. very proud of him. Yeah. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. That's what we yeah, should do well, with him. He wasn't fighting. That's what we he should do. We should there. like hashtag him. Here's a treat. Good boy. Good boy. Here's a treat. He didn't. Uh, he Here's didn't. He wasn't argumentative. He didn't. Oh, do... really? What about that whole thing about investigations? Well, uh, that part I must have missed. <laughs> oh, you it missed. You missed it. Where he said yeah. we're being hampered by this, that, and investigations. Well, oh, true. Oh. Wait, you're getting, Phil. You're getting up for a bunch of stuff there. You missed out the Trump kid, and now you missed out about the investigations. Yeah. There. So how much of the speech did you watch? Well, I was uh, also listening to Alex's uh, uh, thing and. Uh, and then Faye had did, some Netflix thing on. Did you so catch in the of, middle of the speech where where Donald Jr. got arrested by the FBI? Were you there for that, Phil? No, oh, I wasn't okay. there for that. Well, I was. I must have been I'm dreaming it. Yeah, I fell asleep. I fell asleep during the speech, and I must have dreamt <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, it was it was a good thing. Uh, I was happy to see that uh, there was a lot of applause, and you know maybe this is the beginning wait of something uh, good. Wait, I watched the applause. Well, Where was it coming it? from? Where was it coming from, Phil? I thought it was bipartisan. No, it wasn't. There, but pretty much <laughs> that other side of the aisle was sitting quietly and not applauding most of the things. Okay. Well, they were nobody they, shouted out. You lie. No, nobody did that. But I'll tell you something. Yeah, what's only very, Republicans do that. What's very interesting, Phil, and I don't know how you justify this, but I looked at that Congress, and on the right hand, on the left hand, actually, as you're looking from the dais, is the Republicans, and on the right hand are the Democrats. Or if you're looking from the back, the Democrats are on the left hand and the uh, uh, yeah. Republicans are on the right. Um uh, and as I looked at them, I tried to find a black person. Uh, in the Congress? In, in the, among the Republican congressional members. And I, 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 I didn't see one. I know there's one there, at least. And then I tried to look for women. And there were like two or three, and that was it. And then you look over at the Democratic side, and it's a very inclusive bunch of people. Yeah, they're, they're getting Good they're myth. getting all the uh, the discards. Really, like who? Who's a discard? Well, uh, you know, the, the whatever the a discard women. is, huh? Yeah, uh, you know, the, oh, the women. women that they've got there. What about the, uh, the you've got that one congresswoman that uh, the the Muslim one mm -hmm. that wants to uh, bring down Israel and. Uh, uh, I, do you remember her name? She was. I, she's just I been elected. I didn't hear her say she wanted to bring down Israel. Oh yeah, she's a definite. No, no she didn't. She, no, no, she didn't say it. No. Did you hear it, Charlie? I didn't hear it. Her words were her her words were twisted. And ah. just as I said, it's like Alex it's, Jones thing. It's like okay, we're going to find a little quote here. We'll chop out this. We'll chop out that. It, uh, it fits our narrative. She she's been, quoted, she's been quoted. She's been quoted. 
uh, anti-Israeli, anti-Israel person. Uh, many, no, many I want to know why. You, will you give me the well, well, give me the quote? Well, give me the quote, Phil, well, and give me give me give me the quote. Okay, I'll look it up. Because you say, you say she's anti-Israel, she might say she doesn't like the way the Muslims are being treated in that part of the yeah. world. But that isn't anti-Israel. That's being yeah. pro-Muslim. Yeah, well, let me get the negative quote. Which on she's going to be because she's a Muslim just like you're pro-Jew because you're a Chaim Yunkel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex, Alex, what I found funny, you know, right before this thing, as I said, I didn't watch it, but I was hearing, and I listen mostly to right-wing radio because I find it hilarious and just, you know, how hypocritical they are. And they were talking about, like, oh, these Democrats want to bring out these guests that, you know, want to embarrass Trump and all that. But then again, as I said, they bring out the kid that, you know, who's called Trump. Uh, I mean, his last name is Trump, who's been picked on. Oh, we got to bring him out. They want to bring out a family. Did they bring out a kid? Wait a minute. Yeah, they, I, I didn't was, see that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't oh, see oh, that. Hold on, hold on. But somebody's family member who was killed by an illegal immigrant. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's horrible when they do it. But when we do it, oh, that's okay. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, to begin with, why did he bring out a kid named Trump who got fun made of him because his name was Trump? Of course. And if his name was Obama, he probably would have gotten made fun of uh, during the last administration. I mean, come yeah. on. And plus the fact, the plus the fact that that isn't even, that isn't even Trump's, it. That, isn't, that isn't even Trump's name. It's Drumpf. Mm -hmm. That's the family name is Drumpf. Uh, there's two of them. I don't Rashida. Know that. Rashida T uh, Talib and Ian Omar mm -hmm. and the Wiesenthal Center mm -hmm. uh, wrote to uh, Nancy Pelosi on Friday to complain mm -hmm. about the comments made by these two freshman Muslim congresswomen. Mm -hmm. Well, fuck the Wiesenthal. Extreme, it, 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 fuck the extreme Wiesenthal. Extreme anti-Israeli hey, and anti-Semitic statements. Fuck that v v the Wiesenthal uh, uh, Foundation. Well, what, what, what's your source there, Phil? Is it Breitbart? Uh, no, it can't. Comes from the a. Times it comes Israel. from a very, uh, a, a very m kind of militant group against anti-Semitics, and they will take any statement anybody makes and blow it out of out of uh, out of uh, what do we call it? Out of uh, proportion. Proportion. See, I'm losing control of the English language here, uh, but uh, uh, you know, I mean. Uh, uh, there's a lot of questions about Wiesenthal and whether he didn't exploit Jews rather than uh, than help them over the years. You know, he was the he was the big Nazi hunter, and he caught a couple, right. and then he lived on that for the rest of his life. And I know a lot of Holocaust survivors who think he was full of shit. You know, so anyway, Phil, take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm still reading uh, Rashida Tlaib's uh, statement. And what was uh, it? What was it? Well, if you let me finish it, reading it, I'll. Well, well, tell you. Well, 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 I, well, look, I so noticed you were reading because your lips were look moving. Up Stephen, look, mm. up, look up Stephen King, what all he had to say. You know, oh, during his yeah, time. he was just talking about your, uh, uh, you know, Virginia governor and your North Carolina. You know, he's. Uh, Stephen King made oh, some the, stupid oh, statements, the, 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 but so did so did so did what about ism? What about ism? What about ism? There we go. I call it what about ism. Well, so what? What do you mean, so, so what? what? That so doesn't make that doesn't show, make an argument. That doesn't about, wait a minute. That doesn't I'll give you what about what about what about you. what about it doesn't about. make it doesn't make an that, argument. That, that's Phil. the worst thing you can do is answer a question with a question. Yeah, well, that, that's the biggest then that's, question. That tells me like, why I don't want to answer that because I, 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 I know I can't give you a good answer. So I'm going to deflect it to another. This, this you know, Jewish topic. guy, this Jewish guy, was asked the question, "Why do you Jews all answer a question with uh, with, uh, with another question?" And he says, "Why shouldn't we?" Uh, <laughs> I got a bad joke for you. Oh, by the way, according to the Wiesenthal Center, uh, I'm probably anti-Semitic now because I told that joke. So, <coughs> yeah. Phil, Phil, Phil. You want to hear bad joke? You want to hear bad joke? Sure, bad joke. There's okay, never, you know, a, uh, by the way, by the way, let me say this, Doug. Anybody that's ever, I usually didn't let people tell jokes on my radio show for the express reason that none of them in all the years that I've been doing shows told a joke that was funny or told it in a funny manner that sold it. So go right ahead, Doug. Well, you let me tell, you, you were kind enough to let me tell that blonde joke when Albert was with you and it 
bomb seriously. Yeah, I think he yeah. gave the punchline away. But uh, what, but what, what, what was the blonde? Oh, I mean, what was the blonde joke? Uh, about uh, the you know what's the definition of Easter and you know God came out. I mean Jesus came out and saw a shadow and there was like you know six more weeks of winter. Okay, we're we're all laughing at that one. Go ahead, try the uh, what's this joke uh, now that you're gonna <laughs> you're going to attempt anyway, this, here? This, this 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 was a joke from Super Dave Osborne who just recently passed away that he told on the Jimmy Kimmel show. And what it was, now this is a joke you can put nationalities or race or whatever. I'm not going to do that, obviously. This is a joke that came out in the 70s. In a particular Are you going to tell the fucking joke? Or are you going to keep us uh, waiting? All right, all right, all right. I'm going to tell it right now. Two <laughs> guys are on death row. Wharton says to the first guy, get on the chair, take it like a man, wish your, uh, wish your final words. Guy says, I didn't do it, I'm innocent. Wharton says, they all say that, throws a switch, nothing happens. Warren goes, that never happened before. Well, you're free to go. So now the second guy gets in the chair. All right, what's your final words? Guy says, I'm innocent. This is injustice here. Yeah, they all say that. Throws the switch again, and nothing happens. And then the third guy gets in the chair. Warden says, all right, you got any final words? He goes, well, yeah, the first thing, your chair's unplugged. <laughs> uh, don't laugh. Don't <laughs> laugh, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear some chuckles back there, so I guess that went better over my blonde joke. There. That was better than the first. Joke. It was. It was not bad. I'll have to admit that, Doug. Well, and it's I, a Super Dave Osborne joke, so I can't take credit for it. I didn't come up with it, but um, so. But anyway, rest in peace, Super Dave Osborne, the world's greatest stunt man in the world, mm -hmm. who failed at everything. Do you know? <laughs> isn't his brother? Isn't his brother the comedian Albert Brooks? Who was on Albert Brooks. Oh, it's Albert yeah, Brooks. Yeah, Albert Brooks. Yes. Oh, yeah. for some reason I thought he was and, the guy. And uh, uh, Albert, uh, Albert, uh, you know, they they both came from the Einstein family because uh, yep. uh, the uh, their father, who I can't remember his full name, played Parky Carcass on radio and was a comic and is famous for having had a heart attack and died during a roast for Lucy and Desi at the Friars Club. Was was. I was, didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Was Dave the guy who was on uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm? Mm -hmm. as, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. Super Dave. That was, yeah, that's Dave okay. Osborne. Yeah. Right, yeah right, well, it's Robert, it's it, Bob Bob time? Einstein. Thing? Bob Einstein. Uh, Albert Brooks's real name is Albert Einstein. Yeah. And wow. uh, he had to, he he <laughs> changed it to Brooks because he didn't really feel that he would get very far in show business <laughs> with a name like Albert Einstein. So. Well, anyway, I didn't mean to steer your show away over there, but I just, oh, you I just always heard do. That joke and <laughs> you always do. Well, I apologize. I always yeah. apologize. That's okay. That's that. okay. But just listen carefully when other people are talking, because you're not you're not on the uh, 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 Skype. Skype, and and so you can't see the other people when they're talking, and so you don't hear it because there's a certain thing that uh, brings your sound down while you're talking. So, all what? built why into this fabulous thing we... called Skype. What? Doug, Doug, why don't you use the Skype? I don't have a camera. Uh, oh, okay. Well, then you, you wouldn't know. To. You wouldn't know if you didn't see us on video. Okay. The Patrick Blazik has just joined us. Oh, matter of fact, I thought I could turn you on video. I was uh, looking at a porn site here. Here we go. All right. I can see you now. You were on a porn uh, site? Wait, 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 wait a minute. You were on a porn we site? You. you were on a porn site? I was. Gee, I hate to think you were jerking off before you came in on this program. Now, he waited to get onto this program did, to did, start jerking did, off. Did you wash your hands? <laughs> No, I didn't do it because my wife's home. Oh, so okay. I can't do that. Uh, uh, all right. Gee. So, uh, what? If you can't do it? I, 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 I had plenty of hand party at the motel room last night. You mean you can't, uh, you can't jerk off? Down, and, what, why pictures. would your wife be upset with you jerking off? Yeah, I, I got some class. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just not going to do that. You know, I mean, she, yeah. Really? <laughs> well, well, you'll do it if yeah, she's same, not same, there. Same way I won't pee in front of her. <laughs> Really? Wow. How long have you been married? Yeah. Uh, actually, it was 35 years Monday. Wow. Well, usually after six months, you, you even fart in front of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, nah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a gentleman. I don't do stuff like that. 
Oh, that's being a I gentleman. Might be a, I, might, I, might, I might be a sleazy gentleman, but I'm still a gentleman. I'm, I'm still yeah, a, yeah. So. yeah, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so um, uh, let me let me tell you a few things before, and then we can get back to all this. But I uh, over the weekend, I did what I've been working on for about a week in kind of setting it all up and everything like that. I moved the new uh, Mac Pro into this studio. And now we're doing the show tonight on the Mac Pro. And it is fraught with problems. Well, and, really? uh, well part of the problem, I'll tell you what happens. And you know this. Uh, Rob probably knows this because he does tech. Uh, you, you know this, uh, Rob. When you switch over to another computer and then you attempt to do what you've always done with the old computer, there's always something you missed in, in getting it ready to go. And like I use a thing called NiceCast to be the, um, the encoder that goes out to the, uh, uh, out to the uh, uh, server and then you listen to the show through that encoder. And it wouldn't go. It was kept saying, can't, can't, it, can't hook in, can't hook in, can't hook in. So I went to another encoder I had and immediately initiated that and that's what we're run, running with right now. Well, during the interview with Bubbles, I figured the thing out. I had not changed over the nice cast that I put on this machine. I had not changed it over to 64-bit um, uh, instead of 128-bit, which I don't pay for 128-bit, so it won't let me go on with 128-bit. So I had to, it, in other words, it was a, something I had to do with a program that I, there were so many little things I had to do, I forgot about that. And so, but we got on tonight. But... It's working okay. The only problem I've got is I just got a new uh, control board that's going in. I'm putting it in over the weekend, and it should be easy to do. Uh, and uh, hopefully, knock on wood. And uh, the only problem I've got is I'm using a little dongle that uh, allows the audio to go in through a USB port because there are no audio input ports on the new Mac on the Mac Pro. And so it puts in a signal that is just too hot. Uh, now, I checked it on my new board, and what it does, it doesn't even send a signal. It just sends a signal raw, and then the various components you've got catch it. So uh, hopefully the new board will do it perfectly. But I hope the signal is good tonight, and nobody's getting blurry sound, and we're not over-modulating or anything like that. Sounds fine. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, uh, but this new board, I listened to the audio on it tonight, just playing with it in the other room, and it's uh, it, it probably going to improve the sound on this program a great deal. Is it digital? What do you mean, is it digital? Of course. Well, uh, there's digital boards and there's analog boards. Uh, 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 yes, and what do you think you have, Phil? I have a digital board. How's it a digital board, Phil? Uh, it's a... Uh... Do you have sliders on it, sliding pots and stuff? Yeah. Then it's not digital. Uh, no, this is. It goes through. There's a uh, there's a digital interface. No, uh, uh, universal uh, control. Uh, uh, all I'm saying is that it's not. It, 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 no board is completely digital. Am I right, Rob? That they all have some Couldn't, kind of non digital yeah. component to them. I, I I don't know. It's been such a long time that I've been out of audio. Oh, yeah. The I output the output is purely digital because it goes to the USB. On the computer I, I from any, U any USB app. Hmm? I don't think any consumer-based board is going to be... Um, this is what's on my uh, screen. Mm -hmm. So, right. what, do you mean on, what do you mean on your screen? On, uh, uh, on, this is on the, but, my computer. Apparently, there's a, he, can, uh, he, can, he has an interface to his computer that will operate the board as well. This is why he paid a oh. fortune for this thing that he doesn't really need. Yeah, but uh, I don't. Uh, is that a that's, that's a Behringer? No, no, it's a Personas. Personas. It's a, that's an analog board, and basically, yeah. Got way above my head. Uh, <laughs> Not surprising. Yeah, no. It's it's basically a, it's basically an analog board. I mean, they're all analog and digital. They have all digital. They have some digital components in them. In my case, the one, in my case, the new one I've got has a USB out, and what comes out of the USB is digital. You know? The the one I sent you was uh, totally analog. The bearing. Which 
<clears throat> yeah, well, they, it, so, so is what you've got there, Phil. It's just that you're able, because of the way they've set it up, to be able to talk to it through the computer. Right. Yeah. and and uh, I, would, I would agree with that. Yeah. I, I can talk to any number of things that I have here through the computer. I can talk to another computer through this computer. But that doesn't mean that it's all digital. You know. right. Well, it's not all digital. It's got some analog things because well, you're right, right about the sliders. You know. But, uh, yeah. And that's what I said. You know, <laughs> the board itself is not, not it, it, I'm sure it has digital outputs, you know, like the USB right. and so on. But I don't think that the board is, you know, the fact that you can hook it up to your, uh, to your computer and your computer can run it is fine. That's an added feature. That's what yeah. you paid. How much you pay for that thing? Uh, eleven hundred bucks. Yeah, see. Woo! I mean, you don't need to spend eleven hundred bucks for a board. This one, the new one, it fits exact same footprint as this one, and I need one that's small. I can't go with a huge one, you know. Yeah. And I don't know why you need a board that big anyway. Are you recording bands in your apartment? <laughs> no. Then why do but, you have a, uh, have a have a why do you have that much of a board? The one you sent me looked like look like a good board. The one you <laughs> sent me, the one you sent yeah. me is so big I couldn't have even ne I wouldn't have even needed it at Sirius. <laughs> well, okay. this has the same footprint as that one. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Huge. You have the same you have the same board that I do, the old one, right, Phil? Right. Yeah, I sent it to Alex. I gave it to he wanted it, I gave it to him. Right. Uh I it's it was the 24 something Yeah. The yep. new the new one I have has a three three mics input and uh, four and 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 three three inputs for uh, uh, and if I want to use one of the third one uh, I can have uh, f three inputs of uh, you know like audio from various sources. It's no more than I need. I don't need more than that. I don't need more than well, two mics. If I turn on three mic and I can do three mics with the new one. Got yeah, a monitor of porn I was watching with three inputs there. So. I do. Two, <laughs> I have uh, two mics, uh, two computers that uh, go into the board, one for sound effects, uh, and a uh, recorder, a Zoom uh, H6 mm -hmm. that I can record. What do you do with all that? When's the last time you used all of that? Well, I, you know, I'm out of time. Uh, I'll use it eventually. You yeah. know, I, I go through stages when I, I actually, uh, I, able to devote. I actually went to smaller because this one has uh, um, six mic oh. inputs. The new one only has really three mic inputs and then the two uh, for audio, like the audio here. But I hope everything will work fine. You know, there are a few things that I do here on this board that aren't duplicated on the new board, but there are things, like places I can put it, you know, so. Well, you know, the pots get dirty, and uh, and that's what happened to that Behringer one. Well, that's what happened uh, to mine, but didn't you spray it? Nah, I gave it to you. You didn't spray them? <laughs> I, I, you no. Know, I have, uh, I, I just... I bought a new board. But the thing is, I'm yeah, having... And, and he unloaded his junk on you there. Yeah, like basically, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't... He uh, likes holding my junk. Yeah. Uh, basically, I couldn't... Uh, uh, you know, the pots on here are getting very scratchy. And even though I spray them, uh, I have to spray them like once a week or they keep getting that way. Uh, and the thing about the Behringer was that there was oh. uh, the adjustment. If you did adjust the pot, uh, it, it, was, it, didn't, it was either like all on or all off. There wasn't a, a real uh, range that, oh, well, it, you that just, it gave. You should have sprayed it. Yeah? Yeah. I don't have that problem with mine. You, no, yours doesn't work. <laughs> no, mine is the, mine doesn't work because I, I I wired everything all vacocked. I don't know what the hell I did, and I don't feel like un I don't feel like untangling it. But uh, and I want to replace that board anyway. But I want to go with a traditional radio console with a program um, with a program and an audition channel, and that's what I'm more comfortable with. So for about two thousand bucks, eighteen hundred bucks. Um, I just don't I haven't pulled the trigger yet, well, but that's what I want to do. But you and that's another reason why I don't want to spend the time to go through and rewire that thing because yeah. it's not, not going to yeah. be permanent. I, I, uh, I'm going to install, send the it thing. to Alex. He'll take I, I, it. I'm going to install the thing <laughs> this weekend and, uh, hopefully it'll work. Okay. You know, 
the, there's only one output that I can't figure out, and that's the monitor output, and it's, that's the output that you guys hear me through. But I think I can put that through just the, you know what I found out is that when I, um, when I plug this thing in through the USB, this new board, I can, the main, uh, 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 what do you call it, main signal, main output, doesn't main change output. at all using uh, on the USB. It just puts a raw signal into the computer and then everything picks it up. So, you know, there's, there's, it, it'll be interesting. Uh, it's the stuff I got to get used to. And I'm too old to get used to stuff. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. Hey, I got my seats today. What? My Seat? Recaro seats. So oh. uh, uh, the car feels like a new car again. You know? What kind of car you got? What kind uh, of car? I have a Toyota FJ Cruiser. And uh, the oh, seats. I used to have one of those. I used yeah. to have one of those. Yeah, I love that car. So the, the seats, the driver's seat started breaking down. And even though it's got a lot of miles, this car is perfect. And, uh, you know, I, and the I, visibility, visibility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you car, put right? Recaro's in an FJ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the seat more than the car. Miles, car. Miles, yeah, really. How many, miles, <laughs> how, many miles, how, many, how many miles you got on that thing? 148. The seats are worth more oh, than the yeah, car. That's just, yeah. that's, that's, just, that's just getting broken in. I just had to call. Toyota dealership I usually deal with to say like uh, I think I'm going to be in the process of a you know new car there because I got a Corolla. My wife has a high. Okay, this is getting this is getting boring. Shows. This is getting way boring. Uh, not as boring as your as your uh, uh, mixer. <laughs> well, I got all, tried to get off of that, but well, you. Well, 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 anyway, so okay. I mean, anyway, anyway, okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. Fine. Good. Okay. Good choice. Good Great. Choice, yeah. Okay. Oh, jeez. Uh, a new Toyota seat, just the driver's seat. Which you know, there are down. three people here. There are three people who are here who haven't said a word. <laughs> but who haven't said to. a word because you won't shut up. Because All you're right. taking us off in the yeah, into these, Phil, into Phil, these, Phil, these and Phil, and you too. No, Doug, you're taking us off into the talk ditch too. So to just right. just shut up for <laughs> a while. Hi, All Kevin. Right. How are you? I want to ask Phil if you got racing wiper blades too. <laughs> Well, they say Recaro on them. You know, I got German seats in a Japanese car. Wow, that's amazing and interesting. Welcome to Car Talk, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I can tell you another super day. Oh, here. shut up, click, and <laughs> shut up, clack. Isn't that what their names are, click funny. and clack or something, the car guys? Yeah, the car guys. Yeah. Well, if you switch to MSNBC, uh, AOC is on right now, and she's looking pretty hot. She's looking. She's hot. She's hot. I love her. Yeah. Yeah. Free, free, free. You know, what, what if it isn't free, free AOC will give it to you free. Uh, no, I you think, uh, 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 yes, Patrick. Um, I had a very unique reaction to the State of the Union as I looked at all of the inclusive clan members on the Democratic side. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> they were black, Hispanic, they were Asian, they were white, and they were all wearing white, and they all looked like fucking... Oh, oh, wait a minute. I you... thought when I saw Nancy... Were they Nancy nuns? I mean, it, it, it was the most bizarre sight I have seen in, this, in the Senate in a long time. And I thought, what the fuck did the white for? None of them are virgin by a long shot, so it has to be the Klan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, that was a, uh, wasn't that a statement they were making about women, yeah. w women's oh, unity. Right. Thing, yeah, that's yeah. Right, yeah. The last time they did it, this uh, they did a similar thing with the Me Too, the the white. Uh, I think so. Or, yeah, I think it like uh, one of the award ceremonies or something. Uh, the Golden Globes, they wore white. Well, yeah. they looked like Klan members. They looked like a well, they didn't. Have, they didn't have a fucking hood on, Patrick. <laughs> that's the difference. Okay. Brides yeah. wear white. Yeah, well, they, because of the like government her. shutdown, they couldn't that's get hard. hoods. It, it, what I don't understand with, with these group think sort of things is they look like morons no matter what their, their cause. When you dress the same, 
you look like you don't have your own fucking brain. Did you and, even go to Catholic school? And it, it's just, it's, it's, <laughs> well, how about how, uh, how about blue suits and red ties? Yeah, they were all blue suits and red ties on the other side. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, they're right. Thing. They're right. I didn't see all the same ties. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it was. That's what it was. It was it was on it was on both sides. They they pointed that Come out. Back. Oh, maybe. I mean, it just, the white really stood out to me. And yeah, it, it did. Or because of what was going on in Virginia with their governor with the Klan shit, and then I saw that, and I just thought, well, that's kind of funny that everybody dressed in white following a big controversy. On um, clan wear and blackface and well, know, I don't think are, I don't think I don't think they thought of the white. The white is not a, uh, uh, a a form of dress, particularly particular to the to the clan. The clan not only wears white, but they wear it like a sheet, and they wear a hood over their head. So I don't see that wearing white. As a, state, as a statement I, of yeah, unity. It's a, lot different, it's a lot different from the Confederate flag. I mean, people can put that with the KKK, but somebody dressing in white, I mean, you know. If anything, it was I, a I mean, woman. People, people getting bat, people if there was anything bat wrong bat about it, it is you're not supposed to wear white till spring. You know, that's, that's probably the fashion faux pas here. Yeah, if anything, it was a women and a purity thing, which really isn't right either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just thought the, the timing was very, very funny to me. I because they, that, they were that whole, uh, they were clan members. So. That whole speech, that whole thing was just kind of weird show is what it was. It was a weird show. Well, the whole speech. Phil said he was proud of our yeah, well, illustrious that's leader. Not surprising. Yeah, but it was a weird how, show. How did how was it weird for you? For me, it was weird that he talked. He did the usual. Look what I did. Uh, a lot of nothing, and he didn't. You know, he he focused more on uh, stuff that's already been said, and didn't bring up anything good for the future. Really, anything new. Well, what true. happened to infrastructure? I, what happened to the bridges and the roads and shit like that? The stuff that we care about. Yeah, you know anything else? Anything, anything else? You know that's that the stuff that he should be focusing on to get us on his side. But he didn't go for any of that shit. He just went for the other shit. Well, said, he, let's it, not divide, and then turned around and said other shit that would divide. What I was hearing was a lot of here's what I did, and here's what I did, and here's what I did, which is not yeah. what the State of the Union is supposed to be about. It's mm. not to get up there and crow about your accomplishments but for you to state about where this country should be going and your hopes for the future. That's Correct. what the State of the Union is about. And also to say the State of the Union is sound and whatever and whatever right. they say there. But that basically you don't, it's not you going up there and bragging about what you, your perceived accomplishments. It's to say where we are and where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. Hence, and, I didn't tune in because I knew you weren't going to hear anything like no, that. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, I, wasn't, and I then, wasn't going to, but I was hoping, but it didn't work. No, 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 no. Don't. Th 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 there's no hoping with this president. I, I, keep, I keep hoping, but, you know, it just doesn't work. Yeah. I like to bang my head on the table, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. You, <laughs> like, you like the pain. The <laughs> yes, pain. Yes, that's probably what Did it is. Did you hear it at all, Jeff? Did you hear the speech tonight? I, I listened to the whole oh, thing. Oh, yep. okay. Now we have somebody who actually listened to it tonight besides Patrick. And oh, Phil. I did too. And I listened yeah. to the the Democratic response too, and then I called in. How was that? That was that woman who lost her governor, right? Yeah, Stacey Abrams. Yeah. She came uh, back Georgia. and gave him shit about uh, – she definitely gave him shit about the, uh, the, the shutdown. Mm -hmm. Said it was a staged deal. Said it was all staged and – Gave him royal shit about that, and then just you know did the usual other stuff. Right, <laughs> Jeff. How did you? How did you? What did you think of the speech? Uh, most of it was uh, BS. Uh, I I did like the part where he talked about the Holocaust. People. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Because they still, I didn't believe that there was any of them still alive who could show up. I mean, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, other than that. The, there was a little bit at the end about talking about reducing the cost of, uh, of medications. Yeah. But there was not a lot of, uh, here's the way we're going to handle it. Here, Well, here, no, here's how they say they're going to handle it, and it's kind of all wrong. 
they're going after what they call the middleman. What happens is the uh, 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 pharmaceutical companies sell to a middleman, the middleman sells to the hospitals or to the doctors or to the pharmacies. Uh, they want to do away with the middleman. They figure that will bring costs down. But the fact is, you've got to really get to the pharmaceutical companies and get them to bring the prices down. That's where it's really got to start. And they're not willing to do that because they're not going to go after business. Right. You know. And these are people they who... They want to get rid of the salesmen there. Uh, by the way, these are the very people. These are the very people who this year, I was talking to my pharmacy and I said, so I, uh, you know, how much is this going to cost me now? Yeah, but it's going up or what? And they said, well, we don't know how much everything's going to cost because this time of the year they always raise the prices. They always raise the prices. I mean, weren't they making enough money off Cialis last year? They got to raise the price on Cialis this year? I mean, you would think if it was good enough a few years ago at that price for them, they've already paid it back. What are they raising the price for? And then you wonder, no oh, you wonder about that crook a while back who raised the price of some AIDS drug or something. Uh, Just to buy a record. 500%. And yet there are companies out there who in a couple of years have raised it a th their drugs a 1,000%. I had one. Well, look at, look at, look. I had one. Wait a minute, Doug. I had one that was, uh, uh, that, that I was taking that I was $300 for a 30-day supply. All right. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't something I had to take every month. I just had to take it for one month. The next time I went to go get it, cause it was for IBS, the company had raised it to $2,000. So how's he any yeah. different than that guy that raised the AIDS, pr the price on the AIDS yeah. drug? You know, yes, Patrick. Well, that was that. Patrick's got his hand up. Yeah, hey, Patrick. Uh, I have my I, hand up. You know, well, I can't see it, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead, Patrick. <laughs> Oh, I got a question. Yeah. What? Go go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll go then. Um, well, I got, first a question. How long did it take before something becomes generic? Uh, I, I, I think it's the patent. 17 years, is it? Well, Cialis and the, the other drug uh, for erectile dysfunction are now uh, are now out in generic form. Well, the, the reason I asked... I don't, think, I, think, I don't think Cialis is in, in, uh, in no, generic Viagra form is. yet. Viagra oh, just Viagra? Is. Just Viagra. Yeah, I think yeah. it's called... Is it called Sildenafil or something? Yeah, yeah. It's generic. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Patrick. I'm, I take a pill for my bladder to regulate it, mm -hmm. and it's basic, and it's a name brand, and it. I've been taking it for like 13 years, something like that. Yeah. And I'm waiting for the damn thing to become generic because <laughs> it's very expensive for me monthly. And the thing that I find hilarious is here's a drug that is for my bladder that is really an innocuous sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I also take a narcotic for the spasms in my legs. And that shit is like free. It's like twelve dollars for a ninety-day supply. Oh, well, you don't understand. You don't understand, Patrick, why the thing for your bladder is so expensive, because they feel that part of their job is to get you to piss away money. Oh. <laughs> so and, I, I just yeah, thought I would mention that. Yes, Patrick. I just found it funny because the I'm on clonopin, mm -hmm. which is used for a lot of different things, but for me. <laughs> Uh, to help regulate my leg spasms at night. Mm -hmm. And if I were to sell one of those pills on the street, I could probably pay for the Vesicare for my bladder. You know, I'm thinking I got a 90 day supply. I can just sell that shit out on the street. Uh, uh, it, Jeff? Jeff? Yeah. The, the reason that, that you're not getting a, a good price is because there's probably nobody else producing it even though they could because yeah. the market is not that big am i also <laughs> am i also wrong about this what? jeff but i think where gen, where generics are concerned when a, when a drug goes generic the generics yeah. aren't that much cheaper anymore well that's true because no, not you really. know, it's still competitive yeah and and they they can set whatever price they want yeah to. yeah and they go oh well this is generic 
Yeah. And I said, well, well thank Alex you. Is- so I'm 10% less. But yes, Doug. Uh, well, anyway, uh, you know, you're talking about the guy that raised up the, uh, you know, the cost of that pill by so much. That was, mm-hmm. I, I forget what his name was, but he had like that really punchable face. Went by the <laughs> nickname Farm Bro. Mm-hmm. And all I just say is like, thank Mom's God there's those. Uh, yeah, you know, that that has you know karma exists because that guy's now in jail. Mm-hmm. Okay. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I want to add. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but a uh, uh, Super Dave Osborne joke? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, by the way, the one other thing I did this weekend. I'm such so wonderful. My I, I couldn't get sound to come out of my uh, my HP Windows machine while well, I had a, another one in the bedroom. A spare, which probably I could have figured it out, but I just what I did is I pulled out. It had, both of them had flash uh, drives, SSD drives in them. I simply traded them out, put the machine in, and it simply logged on, like this machine always logs on. Looks exactly the same and everything. I'm I'm still got it, still got it. Anyway, uh, the whole thing about the drug prices is something that as I get older gets to be a real problem for me that I, I, I don't understand it either. I mean, the, the most expensive, I, I use Cialis not for a boner, but for, oh, yeah. <laughs> but for the fact that it, it, uh, it uh, allows me to pee. It has, uh, it has those properties as well. And it is considered uh, uh, a, uh, um, a drug for BPH. Uh, and it is singularly the most expensive drug that I take. Even with all the, the I buy a three-month supply, and even with all the um, uh, benefits I get from having a pharmacy, you know, the pharmaceutical stuff, it still winds up costing me 125 bucks every three months. Most expensive drug I'm taking. And why? Because it's a boner pill. Now, you know, I got, I got to tell you, I, I know a boner is important to most guys here, uh, except for Phil, of course. Uh, and um, a, bo- a boner is, is, is important to guys, but I'm telling you, it isn't a life-saving drug, you know, and to charge that kind of money for it is unconscionable. Yes, Patrick? Well, that's what I can't figure out, like, with my bladder medication, it cost me a hundred and either one hundred thirty-eight or one hundred forty-eight dollars every three months for a ninety-day supply. Yeah, and I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I only take three prescriptions. So I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's still a lot of money for that, which is, like I said, a pretty innocuous sort of drug. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't give you a boner. It doesn't do anything like that. It just relaxes the bladder, versus the narcotic that I take, yeah. should you would think that that would have a big impact on my wallet because it's something that you can sell on the street and I got to get my fucking driver's license. Yeah, to get right, it. right, right, right. But this other stuff that you can market your house on, you know, it just, it, I, I don't understand the way to price. Ten there. bucks. <laughs> and thank, thank, thankfully, I did get paralyzed, so I can relate to other people who have the issue with exactly. Medic. Yes, uh, pa- uh, Jeff. Well, the other thing that you that I've found is you can uh, shop from different drugstore companies mm-hmm. and get different rates, even though theoretically they're the same there used to be here in new york i think it was maybe the village voice every week oh no 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 there was a a website or something i can't remember but where they listed the various prices of the same drugs at various drugstores and the range was incredible i mean one store something would cost a hundred dollars in the store across the street it would cost 50 yeah. That it it's really weird. It it is it, it, it and it, it, this is why we need uh, you know uh, universal health care. Yes, Jeff. The other part it's affected very much by what kind of insurance you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that causes a variability of whatever drug you're you're using. 
you could go and look around and see who else could be your uh, your company that that you'd uh, pay for your insurance. Mm -hmm. You might get a bigger benefit depending upon the drugs that you're taking and and what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. They're very, hey, very what? What? What were you gonna say, Rob? Oh, 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 was it Doug? Okay, Doug. That was me. I bet Rob was seeking me. But anyway, no, I was going to ask, uh, this is a question out to everybody, the ones who watched, you know, the speech or started reading up on it. I haven't even read up on any of the things. It seemed like a lot of right-wing talk show hosts were bringing up socialism. The Democrats want socialism. This is all they want. They want to be socialists, and socialism has never succeeded anywhere. Israel, England, Germany, but anyway, um, yeah, no. Uh, did he did, did he bring that up in the speech? Any like, oh yeah, that, you know, the did he the yes. socialist? Yeah, he brought it up. What socialism? Yeah, what did he say? Oh, he basically said uh, that that America will never become socialist, and and they keyed in on. Uh, uh, you could see uh, Nancy's face kind of go, "What the fuck?" <laughs> well, to begin with, to begin with, that's a stupid statement on his it part. Was. I mean, because, it was stupid because, to even bring it up in a speech. Because at, we're in a State we, of the Union speech. We are already have a lot of socialism going on in this country. I've mentioned this to mm. Phil uh, uh, quite a bit. The police department is a form of socialism. The fire department uh, is a form get, of socialism. You know, get real. But what do you mean get real? What do you mean? The whole Democratic Party is there's a split. There's a big divide. You've got the blue dogs, and then you got the socialists. You got the Bernie Sanders. You got the uh, Casio. Uh, and you got the Harrises. You got all all but, these but people. But he was talking got, about a total socialism and you, and you takeover, guys, and, and that's never going to fucking happen. Moores. No, you got the Roy Moores. So anyway, so. yeah, you got the Roy Moores. You've got the Stephen Kings. You've got who else? Uh, you got, the no, Medicare is socialist, huh? The Medicare is socialist. Yeah, everybody. Hey, can I say, hey, Medicare. Your mama is socialist. <laughs> yes, Patrick. Yeah, can I say this? Can I say this one thing about? socialism and you know not wanting to help anybody out it just seems like when it comes to like military spending and everything else or in this wall we got to protect our people we got to protect our citizens we got to protect everything but when it takes you know taking care of them feeding them oh no nah, pick yourself up by your bootstraps you got to take care of yourself screw you you know i got mine how dare you want to tax me to take my money away from me and all that so it's sort of like okay We'll spend money on the military to supposedly protect people that we really don't want to take care of. Well, anyway, we're going we're going off subject there, but the point is that that you know th we have a lot of socialism in this country, uh, and and uh, it's not uh, it's not a terrible thing. Social, well, they talk about socialism like it's something terrible, and yet you ask uh, the average person out there who says, "Oh, I don't want socialism. I don't want socialism." Uh, why don't you want socialism? And they can't really tell you because they can't tell you what's wrong with socialism. Marcella, Marcella Roberts is, by the way, Mar you would know, Doug, if you had a camera, that Marcella Roberts has just joined us and she's outdoors somewhere in sunny Cal. <laughs> I miss my green screen. <laughs> that, that's your green screen, yeah. That's the cheap one from, um, who makes, uh, who does that? I have that one uh, split yeah but i need more light in here and so uh because i i kind of my arm gets cut off and things like that but it's very uh, simple you need, you need right. to have lights specifically on the screen no there is uh, no there is no screen there she doesn't have a green screen phil do you have a green screen behind you yes oh you do all right you do but you don't have to with that no no. Uh, with o OBS, you don't have to, you said. But no, I didn't with say with OBS. I said with, uh, with uh, what is it? What's the company I'm thinking of? XSplit. They yeah. have, a, they have a, a, a keyer that you can use that I've tried that takes no green screen in back of you. Does XSplit only works on, it uh, doesn't work on a Mac, right? It just works on Windows, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I that's one. the Roadhouse where, Marcella? Um, that is a restaurant slash bar that you see in Twin Peaks a lot. If you uh, watch, I thought Twin it Peaks. looked familiar. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it's um, it's about twenty miles from my house, fifteen miles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. 
So anyway, good evening and welcome to now our we know fine where we program. Are. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so you know, I don't. Twin Peaks. Love that show. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is this: this constant harping about we're getting socialism and socialism, as though it's like some horrible thing when people are already using socialism. You know, when they call the police department, that's socialism because look at the, mili- look at the military. How much does I it cost us? How much does socialism. how much do we have to pay to have the cops come out to our house? Nothing. Socialism. Isn't that a whataboutism? Fire department. No, this isn't a whataboutism. This is an example, Phil. Well, There's, a it's There's a difference. There's a difference. It's an example. In the case of fire, your house starts burning. The fire department comes out. They put out the fire. You don't get a bill for it. That's socialism. Yes, Patrick. Um, isn't that what we pay taxes for? Well, exactly. Isn't it? Shouldn't part of what we pay taxes for be free health? Free health. Yep. Why should we and have education. to education? Why why shouldn't we take keep this, care? Keep this country going. What do we have against taking care of each other? You know, what would you I rather? They're equating social. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. go ahead, Marcel. <laughs> they're drawing a line to, from socialism to communism, and yeah. they're saying that we want to be all communists. Yep. <clears throat> that's and what that, I see. In- that's the way he talked about it in the speech. He made it sound. They made it. They directed it more like a communism type yeah. socialism. Yeah, and and the fact yeah, well, is, he's doing something to Putin there, the whole time. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the fact is that uh, uh, any country that's going to survive has to have a certain element of socialism in it, because people, you know, the populace has to be kept happy, and if they feel they're not being attended to, uh, they uh, they get a little cranky. And what happened during uh, the Depression was things were so bad that the reason that FDR did what he did, a lot of the programs he did, which were socialistic in nature, was to keep the wolves from the door because Americans were talking about going to communism. Communism, yeah. And so FDR did everything he could to placate the public by giving them programs such as um, uh, Social Security, that would uh, keep them calm. And uh, we got past that period, and the only thing that came out of it was the House Un-American Activity Subcommittee and people saying, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? And a lot of people were because they saw it as maybe an answer to the problem uh, of the Depression. Uh, So, you know, uh, if we get back into a Depression or we get back into a situation where people feel that they can't make ends meet, all of a sudden, they're going to start looking towards socialism in a lot more, in a much more friendly way. Um, yeah, it's the same thing as how we got Trump in the White House. People yeah. who felt disenfranchised, and he touched a chord. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, you know, with the wrong people. Well, I mean, he he, yeah. Well, you know, they say they say he's playing to his base. Who are they? A bunch of racist bigots? Is that who his base is? You know. I want to know. People from no, but you got to think about it. Though. Wait a minute, Kevin. But you got to think about it. A lot of people, like Rob said, there wasn't much of a choice. There was there was Hillary. People were pissed at Hillary. There was Trump, who said that there was going to be a change, and a lot of people took that chance. <clears throat> well, yeah, and I remember people saying, "What do we got to lose? Let's try." Yeah. yeah. I remember that 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 whole "What yeah. do we got to lose?" Well, mentality. you just found out, and, didn't you? Oh boy, you? did that experiment. Yeah. Happen take a shit you know that that's what trump said to uh the blacks in uh in michigan he says mm-hmm. what do you got to lose and he was right he uh he decreased <coughs> black unemployment to their lowest levels oh, and good. uh black you know, unemployment to their lowest because levels the, phil uh, phil where's the proof the of that where's the, where's the proof where's the proof of that phil i i heard a bunch of lies tonight yeah, they're 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 still doing all the fact checking. It, it takes a while to do all that now. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think that but this black is... unemployment has always been high, though it always has been, and yeah, you know, and it's just if it's gone down a little bit. I mean, it went down during Obama. Yeah, and you know now it's gone down a little bit because what Trump's taken over, and now it's like, look at what we've done. Oh, we care more about the blacks than Obama no, did. He doesn't give a shit about the and, blacks, yeah, and, he, and, and what? This what? Is, and this is from a guy who wants to get the Central Park Five people executed, yeah. even though DNA said like, nah, they're in. The, okay, the, they well, uh, yeah, like, uh, I don't care. Jeff's got his hand up. Jeff. Yeah. 
uh, one of the things that my wife was doing while she was uh, watching the TV, she had her cell phone connected to the New York Times, and everything what he ever said, they would immediately justify why he was lying about that. Oh, geez. Was, so what, know, what about that? Really, what about that statistic with blacks uh, having less unemployment? Yeah, you know, all of those kind of things. They had answers. And Hispanics. No, oh, yeah. yeah, but it's not true, Phil. It is true. No, it's not true. Where? Prove it. Uh, you you asked uh, to prove everything. Yes. You know, yes. What you should do is just is, is not be so uh, <laughs> apt to want to disbelieve. Uh, you know, you just want to blindly <laughs> trust a fucking liar. No, it, it it's true. <laughs> Unemployment is down. It's it's yeah. less than four percent. Mm hmm. And black unemployment well, I mean, actually, is the lowest the it's ever for been. Hispanics were probably uh, yeah, I'm gonna, for Hispanics is probably higher because. A lot of them, I just had a roof put on my house. You know, guys about 10 and all that, so you still have some folks, you know, here probably not documented and all that. So, you know, trying to say Hispanic employment is up higher. So you, can't, you that's hired... Not, that's not true. You can't do that. You hired undocumented workers to work on your home, Doug? No, I hired a company. That's the Trump way. To be licensed and everything else. That's who's out here. I didn't go ask for every green card out there. I just took out because I wanted to get a roof in my house because I have leaks from the last from the hurricane that came through here. So, but I'm just saying. I was, okay. I have a friend okay. Of okay. I just looked it up on Snopes. Sorry. And yes, yeah. Phil is right, but but oh, there's no but. Wait a minute. <laughs> yes, there is. There's a big but, but here, Phil. But the big problem with the claim is those rates had been falling before Trump took office, and their declines don't appear to have picked up speed. Oh. This implies, uh, wait a minute, let me finish, in? let me finish. This implies that there's nothing specific that Trump did to change the rate. Oh, so, you know, it, it's like you say, well, he's picking his nose, but it doesn't count because he's only picking the left nostril. You know, the, it, it's either lower Phil, or it's well, not. No. Is it lower? <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's about. lower. I've never heard but, but, any, what the hell was that? Well, yeah, what was that? That was that was the well, that, of that your snow. That, that that comes under the worst simile I've ever heard in my life. You were better <laughs> off saying that you didn't get no boogers. Yeah, really. <laughs> Patrick's got his hand up. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> or the nose didn't bleed. Everybody here is guilty in one way or another of wanting to believe what they want to believe, whether it's factual or not. I mean, you know, everybody piled on Phil for saying, you know, he believed what he wanted and without fact checking. Well, I would turn it around and say the same thing to everybody else. Yeah, who? The same side. Give itself. us an example. Give us an example. Disprove what you're, you know, what we're saying or prove on your end because I don't think either side is 100% in the right all the time and and what you just said alex as far as the unemployment uh for uh black going down when i heard the state of the union i didn't hear him say it was him that did it he just stated it as something that was happening so in that sense but what was he, the but patrick be honest what was his implication it doesn't matter what the implication he was. Brought, he brought it up he brought it up that came out that's what mattered, what yeah. was said, not the implication. He stated it. I took it as it's been going down, and it would be no different if there was another president there that said the same thing. It, if it was already mm -hmm. going down before your administration, that doesn't make it not happening because it didn't happen in your administration. Okay, Rob's got his hand up and then Jeff <laughs> after him. So I would agree with you, Patrick, if we didn't have a president who we have on videotape numerous times saying, I know more than everybody about fill in the blank. I know more about everything, about anything than anybody else. He knows more about ISIS. He knows more about climate control ch uh, change. He knows more about... You name it, the wackiest thing. So when you hear a guy like that speak, what do you expect that people think 
about him. And it has him. been proven. He and he and we. I mean, he makes such outlandish, crazy statements. We know he's a he's a liar. Why would you believe anything that comes out of this man's rate mouth? Lower for blacks than he said. Sa- he's citing it because it might be, and it probably is, and it be and because it pats Donald Trump on the back. He it, it's it's just incensing to listen to this man. Yes. And, and wait a minute. Let me. Let, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Jeff had his hand up earlier. Yes, Jeff. Well, what I could say is, I think he could have said that when Obama was president, he increased the number of black people who had jobs at what twenty-two percent, whatever the numbers were, and now we've continued to to bring it up from. 22% to 23%. Yeah. See, that That would be a statistical honest yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah. But he's not in that business. Uh, Patrick. I, I, I agree with you, Jeff, with it would be nice if there was statistical honesty. Um, but I would say this. I'm Who's- more apt to believe or to uh, entertain that he's telling the truth Mm -hmm. in a speech like this versus a campaign rally sort of deal. Because here, it's in front of everybody. It's it's supposed to be more factual. So I would assume his staff would be more punctual in making sure things are correct versus him going off on his own at a rally in, you know, in Madison, Wisconsin, where he's just going to rattle off, you know, I brought all of the numbers that are black and Hispanic and Asian uh, unemployment down all by myself. I could see him doing that at a rally versus this. So that's why I'm more willing to entertain truth in a speech like this versus at a rally. That's why I don't watch any of his rallies because it's all bullshit. So okay, I, uh, I think today was a rally. Yeah, today was a yeah, rally. Yeah, that's why. That's what I went in hoping that would happen, but I don't think it did. And that's yeah. what I want to. I, I really want to see how much, how many of those numbers were actually right. I I can't prove that they were right or wrong yet, but I suspect they were wrong. And when I finally hear or see for myself whether they are right or wrong, then I'll, I'll make the conclusion. But. I suspect heavily that they were probably mostly wrong. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll suspect that they're mostly right. I, I, okay. I, I, I honestly don't believe that, but and, that's and, only from history. M- uh, let me, uh, I'm more than well, willing I'm, to I'm, I'm, Wait a minute. I'm trying to include everybody in here. Marcella, any comments on any of this? Well, he lies more than anybody else. He lies, I don't know how many times a day. So, I, I honestly, I didn't watch it, but I don't feel like I missed anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I almost what, think what? if we stop watching him, maybe that'll have an impact. I would agree with you. It'll. He, he's such a whore for, you know, a pr- applause for and whore. praise. Well, this is what I've been saying all along is, you know, the press paying as much attention as they do to him are enablers. You know, I mean, uh, not everything Trump does because he's president of the United States is worthy of a comment. But it seems as though he's every time he says something horrible or obnoxious or something they uh, can comment on, they start railing away at him. And he, he dominates the news cycle more than any president ever has. I mean, you could go a week and not hear about Obama, you know. But Obama was or never oh, Obama was never in your face. And by the way, as long as we mentioned Hillary, worst candidate of all time. I don't think there's. Oh, any, I know. Any, you know, what did you think, Marcella, as a woman? Were you fond of her? I thought she was the most qualified candidate that mm-hmm. we had. Yeah. I, I would have voted for her or Bernie. I didn't hate her, but my son, who's a millennial, mm-hmm. he said he re- she reminded him of a high school vice principal, who yet <laughs> got you in trouble. <laughs> so, so that was his That's thought. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, um, yes, uh, somebody had their hand up or was trying to say something. Oh, I was trying to say yeah. so, I was trying to say something a minute ago, but I'm just you know, I told you I didn't watch the speech or anything. Mm-hmm. But I can just tell right away. Re- I'm reading stuff, clips about it, and just he went after the Mueller investigation there, and it's like right there. It's just sort of like you know what, you know, th- th- he's turning this into a rally. Like, look how unfair. Well, all, all I'm saying is, is it, it, it there's and a he's guilty. He's acting like a guilty man. There's a spirit in which these um, these uh, uh, things are are presented. The you know presidential uh, state of the union, and and it isn't to sit there and to brag or to complain. It's to. Put out your agenda. Here's what I'd like to get yeah. done in the next year. Here are the things that need to get done. Instead, this was like uh, you know, first let's uh, let's 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 love the uh, old World War II vets. Now let's love the Jews. Uh, you know, um, let's do this. Let's do that. And you go, oh, hey, the hey, look, look at the look at the the black lady who I uh, who I gave a pardon to. You know, he was just trying. He was hit, trying to hit all the the notes that somebody would hit in trying to get an applause break, but nothing substantial. Yes, Patrick. Well, first of all, every president has done that as long as I've walked the State of the Union. They'll bring, they got people up there as props, regardless of which president it's been. It's been, you know, this one lost an arm saving a kitten, and, you know. It, no, it I agree with you on it, that. I agree don't with you. that bullshit as far as just having applause line. Because everybody's done it. But going back to um, what Marcella was saying with um, maybe not watching him and what you said, Alex, hang on every word, he lives for not only the attention, but if you disagree with him, he gets off on that even more, which is where I think like CNN and MSNBC and you know, Fox and every, everybody should just, if it's not something like you know, the State of the Union or something from the Oval Office, don't air it. Don't worry about it. He, well, he, he, can I say this? He's the Beetlejuice of presidents. I mean, if you say his name three times, he'll show up, you know? And, and he lives and thrives off of publicity. And if you don't give it to him, it will drive him fucking crazy. But the press is yet to learn that. Yes, Marcella. I don't know if any of you watch Big Brother. I do. Scaramucci was on Big Brother. (laughs) And and he said that what he would love to bring someone in the room, put a Twitter out, Twitter notification out, and watch the, the networks start posting his Twitter feed. And he said, you know, um, he said, like, the New York Times or Wall Street Journal, you know, they might have, like, 20 million subscribers. But now he's got, like, 60 million eyes on his Twitter feed. And that that's that gives him a kick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I it's like I get up every morning and what is MSNBC reporting? The latest tweets. You know, yeah. come on. Don't don't yeah. play into that anymore. Yes. Say something about his administration when they do something that's newsworthy, either good or bad, you know. But don't don't read every tweet and every person he's going after and all of that. And if you don't do that, he will literally dry up. He crawl he'll crawl up in a little ball and start crying because he's not getting that attention. Um, but he's like a petulant well, Fox child. Fox will give him all that attention. What? Fox will do that. Fox will give him all that attention. They all do. Yeah. yeah, it's not going to go away. I mean, MSNBC just makes things into bad. You know. Yeah, well, that's why I have a hard time with MSNBC. Yeah, then you, you know, go there I'm, and you get tired of it. I mean, after I know that I know they're telling me what I want to hear, but I, yeah. you know, I'd like maybe somebody <laughs> not to tell me what I want to hear. Tell me yeah, something. That's why I, don't I switch over hear. to Fox sometimes just to watch the difference. <laughs> well, what's interesting is CNN is a little more even-handed. They try yeah, yeah, to be they, more even-handed. Oh yeah, they try. They try, but and they're not very good at it because they keep no. getting assailed by Trump, so they've got to attack yeah. back. Yeah. But in the case of MSNBC, it's like I tune in everybody. They even have all, they even have a Republican. They haven't even even have a woman who's a Republican on the air there who hates Trump. <laughs> you yep. Know? So, yep. Yep. You know. 
and and Fox has uh, one who he's he's a he's a Democrat, yeah. but he just gets trashed all day. Yeah, and Shepard Smith. Well, yeah, he Shepard was, he Smith was like, is, is okay. He was like, and then uh, was it Neil Cavuto? Sometimes will will wonder what the hell's yeah. going on, but you know he he he's kind of here and there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but the fairest of all in Fox News is Sean Hannity. You have to say that. <laughs> well, been, oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. He's not, he's what a not, piece of shit. Bi- oh, yeah. But you know who also became... Him and Tucker, yes. You yeah, know who right. they who became the be- oh, yeah, be- uh, the boy who gets got beaten all the time was Alan Combs. Uh, Alan, <laughs> Alan was always brought up um, to be the whipping boy, you know, on those shows. Well, um, but, well, I tell you, their new whipping boy now is that gift guy that they have covering every so-called Mexican evasion gif I can't remember his name but I mean anybody named gif uh, or griff or whatever but it, it's like every time it's like well here's everybody down here and here's griff <laughs> it's like it's like oh boy <laughs> what kind of a name is griff you know griff jenkins is the guy's yeah. name griff yeah. jenkins but um i guess it's I guess it's short for Griffin, but it's sort of like, you want this guy to get, you know, uh, you know put him like, in the worst situation. It's sort of like, well, you know, covering uh, ISIS right now. Fact checks are starting to come across MSNBC now. The fact checks? What are they saying? Yeah. You're doing the same thing on CNN. U.S. oil, number one natural gas. U.S. oil has been number one natural gas since 2013. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they've been since 2013, Obama's, but he apparently Ob- said, now Obama's, we are. Obama's watch. Oh, but Obama's now we watch. are. Oh, I see. 2013. Yeah. I yeah. see. Okay. How do you feel about that, Phil? You've been very quiet. Um, He's been very quiet. Lovely. I- I'm trying to print something. Well, wh- wh- why did you pay attention to the show? What did you call for? Because <laughs> that's my job. Because you're not going to be here tomorrow night. At least you should be here tonight, but I'm trying to print something. Yeah, well, you're fact-checking, and... Uh, uh, right yeah, now, fine. you're talking about oil, and it, well, well, how should I feel about it? As far as I'm concerned, you, you, is if there was any positive thing that he said, you'd just say to me, "Prove it, prove it, prove it." You know, uh, there the, was the, one positive thing. They're proving it. To, they're proving it to you right now. That's there was one positive thing. What? What did he say? He said, he said, thank you and good night. Yeah, that was his positive. <laughs> <laughs> I like the part where he said, "Don't you think my wife's a piece of ass?" I think I like that part of it. No, it's his daughter. <laughs> his daughter. The other, the other, uh, the other fact check was we've created 5.3 million jobs, 600k in manufacturing, and the fact is 4.9 million jobs under Trump. And he said how many? 5.3 million. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's uh, nitpicky. So that, that's just that's kind that's of nitpicky. Yeah, that's kind of nitpicky because it's that's not bad. But it so, it doesn't, you know. We so it, I, I rest my, you know. You're right. You know, in a way, like Patrick. Negative. So you know. Well, apparently, uh, it, it, he never says, you know, thanks, President Obama, for for handing me uh, an economy it, yeah. that was on a roll, yeah. you know, and continuing that roll. Eh, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I maybe I'm being too picky, right? I, I'm, right, Patrick. Yeah. I mean, with Obama is going downhill, not going uphill. Like when Obama got it from Bush. Everything was like uphill, you know. Now it's downhill. Well, the de- Republicans always hand the Democrats a terrible, a mm-hmm. terrible economy. Uh, How do they get to be called conservatives? Is what I want to know. Yeah. Fiscally conservative. Yeah. Well, fiscally. They never do it. I'm not against people who are f- fiscally conservative. I think there's nothing wrong with being, say, uh, 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 socially uh, uh, liberal and fiscally conservative. That's my yeah. wife. But uh, conservative means we're going to conserve our resources and our money and our finances, and we're going to be judicious. And liberal means we just want to spread everything around. Um, I don't get how they get to still call themselves conservatives. And judicious is when you're you're kosher. So, uh, yes, uh, yes, Doug. Now, the the conservatives that bug me are like the ones that, but they don't ever get spoken about. I can't remember the guy's name. Very pro life, you know, trying to push in new laws and everything else, having an affair on the side. His girlfriend gets pregnant and he forces her to go get an abortion. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's like you have a lot of those. You have Rush Limbaugh, you know, take all these drug addicts and send them up the r- river. 
Oh well, well, well uh, I don't know the I, brush. I got oxycodone uh, things. So. Yeah, well, you know, he he I was hate the, those type of conservatives. He was the oxycodone guy, so yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. It's sort of like why you know that's the big deal now. Why isn't he the poster boy right now? Hmm. You know, for uh, for that, you know, like hey, look at me, I'm yeah. successful, and yeah. I was a fucking drug addict. <laughs> Anyway, hey, look, I, I noticed that we're kind of run out of time, and uh, oh, wow. I guess the new computer's working okay, uh, yeah. and it's uh, sending out a good signal, and, you know. Uh, Soundboard. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. Boy, uh, it, it, well, of course, we were talking about Trump for most of it, because Trump t- talked tonight. He was allowed to speak, courtesy of Nancy Pelosi. That's what I find so wonderful. She wasn't wearing white. Yes, yeah, she was. Well, the thing uh, yeah, she I was. thought was pretty yeah, funny. When she, uh, she, was she wanted white. to make a point, she'd reach over and clap in his ears. Uh, and every now, every now and then, <laughs> no, 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 did you she notice? She stood up and they turned to the side. Did you notice? <laughs> did you notice every now and then he would turn kind of to her to see if she was standing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's it uh, for the program tonight. I want to thank Rob Alfano. I want to thank Charles Wallace. Uh, I want to thank, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, Who else? Uh, No, I I want to get rid of something here. Hold on a second, folks. Uh, I get rid of all that. Why why did that come on? I don't know. Hey, Phil. Anyway, I want to thank Charles. Yes. What, uh, Rob? Quickly. I want to talk to Phil when we get off. Okay. Okay, I'll stay on the Skype. Well, but yeah, but I'm going to hook up, hang up on the Skype. That's uh, fine. We'll still connect. We'll still okay, connect. okay. All right. Charlie Wallace, thank you so much. Uh, Rob, thank you. Patrick, thank you. Kevin, Phil, Doug, uh, Jeff Stein, and Marcella. Do it more often. We love having you here. Okay? Uh, and that's it. Uh, why don't they all kind of wave a big wave goodbye? Yes, that would be the answer to the whole problems here in America. People waving goodbye. Anyway. Uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of our uh, of our citizen panel. Okay, we did that, and then I got to sign off of Skype. So the next show, which is Jack Bishop in the Intersection, uh, can use it next. Uh, we'll be here again uh, tomorrow night. Okay, right here, uh, same time, same station in life. Uh, uh, right after Damian Chaplin and the exchange. Oh, by the way, tomorrow night is the sports show at 8.30, the arena with uh, the franchise MC. We'll see you tomorrow night, uh, 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.